Thanks, uh, Kian Corla. Obviously, this relates to the establishment of Irish Water based on the Price Waterhouse Coopers analysis, which local authority engineers have stated contained uh, significant errors, omissions, and uh, inappropriate comparisons, which have led to a lot of frenzy about the idea of local authority workers standing around doing nothing in the Thank context of Irish Water. So, I'd like the Minister to comment on that report Thank you, Deputy and the analysis. Well, I want to I can assure the deputy the local authority workers are not standing around doing nothing. Uh, the government decided in December 2011, based on the recommendations of the independent assessment, to establish a public water utility company to take over the operational and capital, deli capital delivery functions of local authorities in the water services area. The government also decided that the question of whether the role of Irish water should be assigned to an existing state agency merits further analysis. This further analysis considered the, cap the capacity and the capability of a number of state agencies with the potential to incorporate a new, u new water utility and was undertaken by a team comprising of my department and New Era in consultation with the Department of Communication, Energy and Natural Resources. The analysis concluded that board got a key capabilities which could be brought to bear in the establishment of Irish water. These capabilities could be paired with the experience and commitment to service in local authorities and the specific water and wastewater capabilities and expertise that exist in local government to build a new organisation within the board gosh group. As part of the reform process of specific structure, the Irish Water Consultative Group, chaired by Mr. Kevin Foley of the Labour Relations Commission, was established in 2012 to facilitate engagement between unions and management on the water sector reform programme. The deliberations of this group included discussions regarding the human resources aspects of the reform process. Deputy Daly. We've been subjected to a frenzy in the media over the past while about local authority workers standing around doing nothing uh, under the new arrangements in terms of Irish water. A campaign led by a, a media largely owned by Dennis O'Brien, who has a vested interest, obviously, in the whole Irish water scenario. The decision to set up Irish Water as a standalone entity was based on inaccurate comparisons with Scottish Water. The reality is, and it was pointed out to you, Minister, previously, is that that Price Waterhouse Coopers analysis talked about the Irish Water pipe network being 25,000 kilometres long, but in reality it is 50 thousand kilometres long. It talked about a workforce in Scottish water of being uh, about 1,600 uh, workers, whereas the reality is, is the amount of workers in Scottish water is nearer to 4,000. And as a result, we have spurious comparisons about workers in local authorities who are currently engaged in managing our water supply under the new arrangement being idle. Isn't it true, uh, Minister, that your decision to set up Irish Water has more to do with the possibility of privatising that service in the future rather than any beneficial uh, advantage to uh, remediating or dealing with our water supply, which the local authorities were doing quite well and which would have been doing a lot better had your government and its predecessors invested in it properly. Minister. First of all, there will be no privatisation of Irish water unless you are going to support that in the future. I have no intention of bringing that proposition to the government or indeed to the Oireachtas, which requires an act of the Oireachtas to change the legislation that was passed in respect of that matter. What? Welcome, welcome to the gym. Um, the criteria used to assess the relative merits of an existing utility versus a greenfield operation meant that we did look at existing semi-state companies and to leverage the savings, to leverage the capability and experience that they had. Uh, we looked at Board Mona and we looked at Board Gosh Aaron on the grounds of uh, certain criteria. Uh, and those were legal in governance or regulatory, or transition and or dealing with customers as, as they were in Board Gosh, I suppose was the overriding advantage of why they were actually able to deal with setting up a new public um, utility like Irish Water. So across a range of about 10 or 12 headings, Board Gosh uh, were able to compete better in, our, in the view of the new era and the department in relation to uh, taking on these new responsibilities. And by leveraging that particular expertise and skills and the type of uh, software and hardware systems that they already had in place in Bogart, we were able to save 87 million euros. So it's not a standalone entity. We're setting it up within the local government system through service level agreements and the Bogart group. And I do agree with you that the workers of local authorities are doing a great job. They will continue as local government employees and they will continue to, with the expertise, the knowledge and, the, and the, the type of role that they've had over the years. And that obviously will be subject to review every, every year as part of the service plan. 
Come on, Deputy Daly. The dogs on the streets know that Irish water has been a ridiculous waste of money and that there is no benefit to it at all. The point I make, and I don't know if you heard me or whatever it was, that in actual fact the decision and the analysis taken to set up that company was based on inaccurate and frankly wrong information which gave wrong figures for the pipe network in Ireland and the amount of people employed in Scottish water and as a result of that misanalysis you've had a false policy. Now the local authorities were dealing with where they could improving water conservation, fixing leaks and instead we have under the guise of allegedly dealing with our primitive water infrastructure, a new company being set up, and all of the waste products, the uh, septic tanks, the wastewater facilities being left in the hands of local authorities while the water bit goes to uh, Irish water. And the only logic to that scenario is about the commodification of our water supply. You well know, Minister, that once you charge for a public service in this way, you cannot stop private operators from bidding to get their greedy claws on it. Thank so you. your, your commitments that there's no privatisation, frankly, aren't very comforting. Thank you, Deputy. Final reply, Minister. Well, I, I don't know where, what dogs you've been talking to on the street, but I can assure you there'll be no privatisation of water by this government. Perhaps you might support a future government in relation to that, I don't know. You might, you might have something in mind. But all I can do is set out what the present position is and what the future position is regarding the two parties in government in relation to Irish water. Uh, there will be no privatisation. We did carry out a very detailed analysis, not just in the PwC report in relation to water. We are making significant amount of investment in the, in the future of water in terms of quantities and quality that's required for your constituency and required for the greater Dublin area and indeed the East Coast generally. We will have a capital investment programme uh, announced in the next couple of weeks by Irish Water, which will hopefully identify a lot of the gaps and a lot of the demands that are there in order to ensure and safeguard the supply of water that we see that is wholly inadequate in the Dublin area. The margin of possibility that you will need, our margin of, of water that you need in any particular area is 15%. We're just down to 3%. So the waste of water that's going on through the existing system, maybe you are particularly happy to allow that to continue. We are not. We want to double the amount of investment, and we're going to do that through one centralised model rather than 34 local authorities.